Hey all, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft and we work on a project together from beginning to end. And uh, we're here about an hour each evening here. So we are working through the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. And we are at the quilting stage. So I've been starting to do some free motion quilting. I have not done that before this quilt. So we're just kind of working through each little, each little zigzag we're gonna give a different, um, we're gonna practice basically. So this is gonna be a practice quilt for me. Uh, we did the meandering, the stippling uh, last night. So tonight we're gonna do swirls. So we're gonna do some uh, meandering swirls and see, see how that goes. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll get going right away here. Uh, I'll let you know why I started a little bit late tonight too. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around. Thanks for joining me. All right, got the quilt going here. So here's what we did yesterday. We did, we started the stippling. So we did, we did the whole row of stippling or meandering. We did that here. I wanted to show you one thing about it. So on the back, I looked over it when, when we were done last night and I noticed that I have a lot of the blue coming through. So what that means is my tension uh, is not tight enough. So, or it's not as, it's not tense enough. So I, I upped the tension so that my front thread will pull that back thread through a little bit more than it is. So this is also uh, something that I have read about. It is in the uh, uh, Machine Quilting with Style book by Krista Watson. Uh, it's a good, uh, a good idea to match the front thread to the back thread because then if something like this happens, it's not very noticeable. Um, I'm not going to worry about it just because I know how to fix it. I just can make it tighter and use the same color. And I'm more interested in using up the thread that I have. So if it, if it pops through a little bit on the back, I'm not going to worry about that. But it is, it is a good signal for me to make a few adjustments. And I did that with the tension. And um, I'm not doing it with the color though, but that would be another option for me to make sure that the front and back uh, colored threads are the same. So I gotta tell you guys why I started a little bit late. I was freaking out. I thought I had lost the case for my bobbin. So the bobbin, you know, here's a bo the bobbin for the machine. Um, this is the one I'm gonna use tonight, but I, I you know, took it out of the case and I, I'm like, where are the, where's the case? So I took the quilt down, you know, here it is right here. So I, I looked everywhere and everywhere and where it ended up being is right where it is right here. It just blended into the metal from, um, from my stand right there. So I'm like tearing apart my whole entire sewing area to find this thing that is right in front of me there. Oh, man, drove me crazy. I'm like, oh my God, how can I lose the bobbin case? So I'm gonna throw that in here and we will get started tonight. So when I do a bobbin, I always, with the bobbin case, this style bobbin case, I always uh, have this arm going up over the top versus, versus underneath like that. So I, I hold it so it's on the top and I hold the thread so it's on the top as well versus going underneath. Uh, and I have the bobbin so the thread is going away from me over the top. And I have the bobbin holder with that arm going towards me. So towards and away. Then you slide it into that little slit right there. Keep pulling it through till it's to that open area. And there we go. And it should, you should be able to hold it like there. Bonnie, you do that too? Yeah, I mean, it was literally just sitting right here and I took, I moved everything and uh, um, oh my gosh, I was freaking out. I had my husband come like, oh my gosh, where am I missing this? Where's a logical place? And then, you know, of course, the moment I uh, call him for help, then, then I find it right there. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we're gonna use some of this blue thread again tonight. 
we're just kind of using up thread. It could be fun to use some different color threads as we go, but I'm what, what I'm getting more excitement out is just using up one thing of thread until it's gone. So I don't know. We'll see if we use other colors on this or not. Just kind of dependent on um, how much thread we end up using. I would like to try a free motion um, quilting design that's really intensely um, dense. That'd be fun to do uh, for one of these one of these times yet. All right, so I have both the item, both the threads up, the bobbin thread and the top thread. Um, I, I have this business card here, this little um, paper guy here, um, and I have them taped onto here. What I'm doing with this is it's just covering my feed dogs because my feed dogs, it's broken for some reason. Like this is supposed to lower my feed dogs, but it's, it's just not. Um, and uh, there's something wrong underneath it. Like I can't get, I can't just get a, a little bar to move over for far enough. So I need to get it, bring it in. But in the meantime, I've been just using this and it's working perfectly. So I just poked a little hole in there with a, a hole punch and have it taped on here. And it's so far, I haven't had any problem whatsoever. So I'm, I'm pretty thrilled about that. All right, let's get Let's get our next area. So we're gonna do swirls tonight. Oh, you, you think you need a another bobbin case now? You lose everything. I just, I, it's my bobbin case. It stays with the machine. I just couldn't, I was like, where could this possibly have gone? It's like when you, you know, where you always put, this is the problem with my baseball hat right now. I'm missing a baseball hat and I, I put it in one place. There's no other place it should be. And I just, I don't know where it went. And same with like the bobbin. It, there's no other place it should be. All right, so I am just pulling up that top thread. I made like one little stitch with the wheel and that's just to kind of grab I'm sorry, grab this bot, bot and thread so I can have them both up at the top. And I'm gonna just start a few stitches here um, to kind of lock it in place and then I'll get my, my um... all right, about there. Now I'll get my, my glove and the grip it. So I've been kind of using one grip it on this side and a glove on, on this side and I've been using the glove on this side just because I don't I don't have much to go like I This is the amount of space like you can see my glove on the side here That's the amount of space I have for the neck on this machine. So anytime I go this way um, It's almost too far to go with the grip it so I you know I can maneuver a little bit better with the hand I should probably try it with the grip it again, too All right, we got more bulk that we're dealing with in here, too. So that'll be interesting um, all right, so tonight we're doing um, little swirls. So this will be kind of an extension of the meandering that we did last night. I think I'm going to feel a little bit more comfortable with these than meandering because I can cross over. Um, I can cross over some spots where in the meandering I was trying not to. So I'm just going to start small, I guess. So I do still have the same issue of I got to get in and out of spaces though. So I'm going to try and challenge myself for that. Ooh, right now we're pretty densely stitching. <laughs> so this could be my densely stitched little uh, bit. So I'm trying to not do totally in rows so it does look different. All right, readjust again. I think it's looking okay. I just want to check the tension quick. Let's let's flip it to the back a little bit. See if I'm still poking through. Me, I think we're okay. We're just gonna keep going here. These are your favorite, Gretchen. Yeah, I'm starting really small here. I'm kind of I don't know why I did that, but uh, maybe we'll try different sizes. Like we'll do 
one V, maybe we'll do these really kind of tight loops, and then on the next V, we'll try and do it a little bit bigger, just to kind of kind of practice different sizes too. You know, I think I'm just kind of realizing one reason I might be uh, going pretty small right now is oop, is that um, it's getting harder to move. <laughs> having a hard time speaking. It's getting harder to move the fabric around because I got all this bulk here now. So that's interesting. That might become an issue here soon. All right, I got I to gotta work back up into here. Let's see if I can do that. Like it's it's hard to move a bigger a big distance. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to manage that. Ooh, like right there, hard to move. I think you know my hand just needs to be closer. Yeah, I think I need, just need to start and stop a little bit more often. You scooched a lot. You just scooched a lot. Okay, I'll try. I think I need to do that too. I need to like go for 10 seconds and then scooch and like another 10 seconds and scooch. All right, that was like 10 seconds and scooch keep stopping and adjusting more often okay i think i think i definitely need to do that so that'll be a good challenge for um the next little v because like i was saying maybe this v i do these close stipples but maybe uh these close swirls but maybe for the next v i go a little bit bigger which is going to mean a lot more starting and stopping. All right, I think this is a de decent pace. I just got to remember to stop and move. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Sue. Yeah, I'm just really trying to get comfortable with this as comfortable as I can. And I was just remembering, okay, I got to remember to breathe and relax my arms a little bit. Because again, I'm, I'm just cramping up my wrists and not breathing. <laughs> Definitely not breathing. All right break. So I got to get up in here and up in here again. And then I think this next V, I'll try and go a little bit bigger because clearly my immediate tendency is to go really small. Um, but again, I think that's because I'm dealing with this bulk on this side. But that's, that's something I'm going to have to figure out because I'm always going to have bulk and that's going to get worse and worse as we go along. So I need a strategy and you know, we're figuring that out now. Man, some of these loops are a little crazy, but that's okay. And I don't have to have them all be loops. It can be like a little wiggle and, and some loops. I think I just have to get comfortable with the side to side. Like the back this way and this way. Oh, you think you're holding your breath watching me? Oh, funny. All right, I do want to try the bigger, some bigger loops. So let's, let's try and do this one a little bit bigger. 
And then, I mean, I, I think these actually small ones are awfully cute, so maybe we'll go back to the small ones, but I just wanna see if I can manage, this is like a bulk test. I wanna see if I can manage this bulk, and you know, maybe it is um, going, going a little, um, a little, a little slower. or stopping and starting a little bit more often. All right, so I am, I'm actively trying to make larger loops here. You know, I think it's more about just being a little bit more mindful. Um, you know, I started doing just what felt comfortable. Now I'm actively trying to do something different and I have to think about it a lot more. But I think it's actually turning out a little bit better because I do have to think about where do I go next. And that faster stitching, the faster foot pedal is making me have to sew slower, which is kind of the opposite of what you'd think. But I think that faster foot pedal is helping me. Ooh, I almost got stuck there. Um, Who? let's see if I can, I wonder if I can get a loop up in there. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't bother. Yeah, I think we'll just not do a loop up in there. <laughs> All right, where did I leave off a loop around here? Get it up to good speed again. We'll do a, just a wiggle there. All right, time to move. You like doing loops more than meandering, Marianne? I think, I think that's how I'm feeling too. I, I just, I don't know, there's something about that meandering that I just feel like I might get trapped like I am right now. Uh, got out of there. <laughs> All right, so I can feel these getting a little smaller again and since I wanted them to be bigger I'm gonna try and get them a little bigger again I'm noticing I have to get back up in there so let's make sure I don't skip that we'll do a big loop up there I do like the uh, these loops with a little bit of wiggle in it like every once in a while doing a little you know just back and forth wiggle all right, I'm clearly needing to move again. All right, back up in there. And uh, we'll have this, this, other, um, this other guy done, so let's see. Maybe we should try a really itty bitty one. Just super itty bitty, and then uh, maybe a big one again. Trying to get... Um, Trying to get some variety in skills, basically. You know, there might be an area on a quilt that I want to do really small, and then there might be an area that I want to do really big. We'll get down in there, and then work our way back up here, and then we'll make it small. All right, let's do this uh, one super, uh, super little. You're watching a different Facebook Live. Oh man, all your favorites are on Tuesday evenings. Oh man, lots of people doing Tuesday evening scopes or uh, Facebook Lives. I still call them scopes from back when we were doing periscopes. All right, I'm gonna try and do a really dense, a uh, really dense one now just to give it a go. So even smaller than the first one. Let's see, which will maybe take us a lot longer. But you know, I wanna try and see if I can fill a bigger area because we've been just kind of working with these little stripes. I don't know quite how I'll get out of bigger area situations. Let's get up in here.
So this is a kind of a fun way to really fill in shapes, probably. All right, I, I didn't get out of there very gracefully. <laughs> All right, time to adjust. <laughs> really little ones. Here, let me see if I can get a little bit, um, maybe right there, then you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Let me know if you like this sideways version or if you want to do it like more from my angle. I'm thinking my loops could be a bit bigger. They feel a bit cramped, maybe. Got a little wiggle in there. When you do large areas, section it. Oh, okay, so that's a good good way of thinking about it. Section the large areas. Wow, these um, little movements are a, a little bit harder than the big ones. I'm noticing, all right, I gotta get this section up in here now before we get too far without it done. getting trapped again. Yeah, and with this, um, with these little ones, I think um, it's a little harder to hide uh, your lack of accuracy. So like every once in a while when I have a big stitch or something, it's really called out, I think, or like a pointy stitch, it's really called out more than when I'm doing the, um, the big stitches. But I'm still not, you know, I have a lot of these, it's very stringy, I, I kind of like, um, let's try to maybe do just as small but with bigger loops. Maybe I gotta go a little faster so I can go slower with the machine. I like practicing though. This is this is fun to just give these different these different ideas a try. Like I said, this is this is my learning quilt. This is this is when I want to learn how to do all these different things so that when I go to another quilt, I'll have tried a bunch of stuff. Okay, so all of a sudden my bobbin thread is coming up. I'm wondering if it's time to just, I don't know. I don't know why that's happening. Let's just see if it continues, I suppose. Otherwise, I might need to... Um, Take this out and see what's going on. All right, yeah, it's definitely d still doing it. I wonder if we have a funny back here. Oh no, so uh, we are we are stitching. There is something on the back, but I thought um, you know, like some of our our fabric from the back, the uh, the chevrons, but not any of that really thick stuff that we did. Let's see. 
I think maybe I'll go down to this point. Actually, you know what? Maybe we should just stop right here. I just want to check because it is doing some weird um, bobbin stuff. So you know what? We're going to take it off and see if we can figure it out. So I'm just going to snip real close here. See if I can snip it from underneath too. All right, let's take this out. Maybe we'll get a test strip out too. Let's just peek at it. All right. Well, let's see how we how we're doing too. So, all right, we started with kind of just however it felt comfortable. So those were a little bit smaller here, um, kind of little medium sized loops. And then I tried to go a little bit bigger and man, in my head I was going way bigger than this. <laughs> There's some spaces we could have probably filled in a little bit better, managed our space a little bit better, but I think I got a little bit better at managing the space here. I don't know. Then here's where I'm going really a lot smaller. Uh, but here's what happened all of a sudden. So if you can see here, all of a sudden the uh, bobbin thread is, is popping up here. So maybe we just need to run it through here again. Um, just kind of clean up shop here. See if everything's... Make sure nothing's caught. Um, you know, every once in a while it catches on here a little bit. Um, so let's just... I'm going to just rerun the thread and see if that does does the work for us. And you know what, I'm gonna take the bobbin out and put it back in. Who knows what's happening? For some reason, the tension got weird. Um, it doesn't look like anything's too wrong down here. Like it's, it's not catching on anything down here. So I'm gonna put that back in. And uh, we'll re-thread the machine. It's good to do this every once in a while, just Check to see if everything's right. If something's not sewing right, then it's it's just time to see if you can figure out what's going on. So we're just gonna re-thread and re-give it a go. All right. Grabbing my bobbin thread from underneath. All right, close that up and let's get back to where we left off. <coughs> Excuse me, man, I'm blowing up fuzz. That could just be the problem. It could just have gotten too fuzzy. I should maybe clean it out. All right, we're on row three over here. Um, my feed dogs are, I'm blocking my feed dogs, Tracy, with, um, with a business card just because my, my feed dogs aren't dropping for some reason. Like they're, it's just not working. So I don't know if the, the surface is an issue at all. Like it feels like things are moving around. Uh, oh, thanks. Um, it feels like things are moving around okay. It's just um, all of a sudden those bobbin threads start coming up. All right, I'm gonna just try and stitch where we left off for a sec here. All right, let's give it a go. Actually, let's, um, well, I'll snip those threads later. Okay, get this guy out again, and here we go. Lost the glove. And I'm gonna get you guys situated above here again. All right, let's give it a go. See if it, um, See if it works out now. Where did I loop? Okay, down like that. All 
Alright, seems to be good again, so that's that did the job. I just uh, took it out, re-threaded, something was getting stuck somewhere. And that seemed to take care of it. So, instead of powering through and keeping on just stitching, I, I just decided to take it off, clean it up, and that, that seemed to work. Yay, that makes me happy. Sometimes you just never know why why that happens all of a sudden. When in doubt, re-thread. If it still doesn't work, throw on a new needle. Alright, I gotta work myself back up this way. That's kind of a little weird one that I got in there, but that's okay. Wow, I really got to stop and move, move more often, I think. Even now, just keep moving, keep moving. done here. Let's get in this corner. All right. <laughs> All right. That is the, the, um, that really dense, dense, uh, swirl so I can definitely tell that this feels flatter and more dense. I'm gonna do some bigger ones again. Oh the um Bonnie I, I um shared a little bit about that yesterday. I ended up I finished washing my splendid sampler quilt. I'm gonna snip these since they're here. My split my 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 first splendid sampler quilt and I did need to use the uh, uh the shout color catchers. The color catchers were totally blue. Um, were totally blue when when they came out of the washer. So it was definitely good that I used the color catchers. I think I could use some more next time. It didn't bleed a ton, although uh, after looking at it again today, it did bleed in a couple spots, but not too bad and not very noticeable. But yeah, I'm glad I used the color catchers. Oh, I must be a good driver because I have my good throttle foot. I'm any more weight on the foot and it just really speeds up. I'm really trying to be cognizant of how fast I'm going and adjusting. Um, so I still do want to do that, that sketchbook cover. Uh, I had a couple things come up with that, but I'm still working through it. Um, we'll definitely do it, hopefully, by the time we're, we're done with this. Um, I think this quilting is going rather fast. I mean, I do want to do some more 
intricate designs yet, but um, I do want to do that sketchbook cover. So it's I want to do an embroidered sketchbook cover, and it's from my book, this uh, sketchbook sewing project, and it has a zipper in it and uh, for a zipper pouch, and it's just really, really fun and easy. So we will still be doing that. I, I am still trying to figure out how to get the right, right materials um, so we can have it a kit ready. That's kind of what the holdup is. All right, my my top my bottom thread is coming up again here. I wonder if it might be just time for a new needle too. I don't. My presser foot's down. Hmm. Yeah, it just all of a sudden just starts, just starts up. I wonder. Let's just go to the top here, and then I might have to take it out again. We might not finish this row today. We got a whole lot more of it to do. But I was just trying that dense stippling, so that took more time. Yeah, I'm not happy with that thread coming through. I'm going to try and take this off again. That's a bummer, though. I'm sure this is something that happens, and I'm sure there's a solution. All right, yeah, we're going to stop right there. I'm, uh, I'll have to... Do some Googling when we're done here tonight. See if I can figure figure that out. But you know what? I think in the meantime, I'm going to, we'll just, uh, we'll take this out again. And I think this time I will put in a new, uh, I can't get the, a new bobbin. And we'll put in a new needle too. I'm just trying to find the, Bob and thread here. There we go. Oops, dropped my scissors. Did I tighten the tension too much? I don't think so. I barely tightened it, it at all, really. And it seems to be working until it just all of a sudden doesn't. So, um, man, is it scraping against the... Maybe it's scraping against the the um that hole there that could be so let me show you i think from this angle it looks like it might when this is pulling up it looks like it might be scraping this bunny a little bit yeah so maybe i just need to move that over a hair i don't know if that is really the problem though i'm going to just try switching the bobbin we'll see what happens with that Because if the bobbin's, oh yeah, this might be the problem. The bobbin's getting really low here. I don't know, oops, sorry. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the bobbin is low. So it might just be catching really funny. Like it might be catching the other end. So I think this bobbin is just, just kind of done. Um, we did a lot of stippling this time or a lot of um, dents, a lot of dense sewing. So I'm thinking that might be, might be the issue there. So let's get a fresh, fresh bobbin on. Um, I don't think there's that much fuzz right now. I think new bobbin, new needle, and then we'll see how it goes. We'll work on it for like 15 more minutes or so. All right. You know, I'm definitely more in the practice of switching needles more often. Um, let's see, I think I'm using a 90. I have my little bin here. Yeah, I'm using the, the 9014 for, for this. Because our thread is bigger. Our th this is a bigger size needle than I normally use for piecing. Um, and it's because 
our thread is bigger. So I, I want um, it to go through the eye of the needle a little bit better. Problem solved, you think? I, I hope so, Robin. Yeah, I think, I think it might have been that that bobbin was really low and it, it might have been catching on, you know, the other end of the, the thread in the bobbin. So I think this will do the trick. And, you know, for extra credit, we put a new needle on. <laughs> you know what, I'm going to re-thread too. So you guys can see. Just to make sure that it's going through the tension wheel correctly, just re-threading. Oh, you have no idea about um, new needle size. You know, I, I used to, before I had a little bit more information about needles, I used to just leave, I'm going to snip this too, I used to just leave whatever needle I had in, and, and it was probably in the same needle for years and years, um, and I, I didn't know what it was in, or what needle, size needle or anything was in there either, but now, um, upon all your guys' suggestions and that it, it's just working out for me, I do change it more often. And I do that because, you know, it can get dull and sometimes, sometimes when, um, sometimes it, it, there just might be a flaw in it and that could be one of the big reasons, like, something's just not, just something's not right with your sewing. It might be just your needle accidentally, like, grabbing on something incorrectly. Um, just because it's got some sort of flaw in the needle or it's dull or, or something else. So um, one of my, my problem solving things now is switching the needle and uh, sometimes it does the job, which is awesome. Um, needle sizes, I usually uh, use a, uh, what is it, 70, oh, I forget the second number always, um, like a 70-10 or an 80-12. Uh, it's just a, a, has a slightly smaller eye than, than the one that I'm using now. And it, for me, it's really about the thread and the, the thread and the eye of the needle. So if you're using fatter thread, you want to use a, a needle with a larger eye just so that thread doesn't scrape on the eye and it wrecks the thread a little bit. The two numbers, I think it's just like metric and non-metric, uh, like European sizes and, and uh, American sizes. I think that's all that is. Um, I forget the actual thing. I forget the actual thing that that measures. I'll have to look that up again. All right, so I think we're back in business. Let's let's give it a go here a little bit. See if we can get any further on th these loops. And we'll probably have to finish these loops up tomorrow. Cuz I do not think we're going to finish them tonight unless we get unless they turn out really awesome and they're going faster. But that requires me to make the bigger loops and I'm not doing a good job at making them very big. I'm going to make an effort to make them really big. That just mo requires moving the bulk around. All right, well, I don't have the, the uh, bobbin thread coming through anymore, so that's an improvement. I can feel, though, that I do have something on the back. Like I have, um, there's some different, different, like the, the fabric on the back is not completely flat right now because it, it's getting stuck on whatever's in the back every once in a while. All right, I got it. Oh, it does sound quieter, doesn't it? 
It sure does. You are absolutely right. Ooh, it's also not wanting to move as much. Let's get resituated here. Well, maybe with these big, big circles we can... The problem with these big circles is that they fill this space really quickly. Maybe I just have to stop and move more. That's a good practice to get into. I couldn't decide what direction to go right there. Machine makes a different noise when the bobbin is getting low. Oh, I'm gonna have to pay attention to that. I did not know that. Ooh, that's a fun little magic insight. So I'm actively trying to make these loops a little bit bigger, but that means I gotta move my whole quilt a lot faster and make better decisions on getting out of tight spots. So that's that's my current, current challenge I'm working through in my brain. Kinda doing a meander and loop situation. And I gotta move more often. I'm just really not moving as often as I should. Yeah, I think we'll finish this. We got, um, if I keep going at this pace, which is good, this is a challenge for me, this this um, this um pace here. Not, not necessarily the speed, but the size of these loops and making good decisions in this small space. That's the challenge right now. And still filling the space. But I like, I like how fast it's getting filled with this size. Yeah, I don't know if I'm making the best loopy decisions though, but it's going fast. Oh, Linda, great. Uh, Linda just posted a, a link to everything you need to know about sewing machine needles. trying to think of filling larger spaces in my brain, trying to see more of the fabric, more of a bird's eye view. Man, this is like playing the drums where you have to think of um, what are your feet doing? What are your hands doing? What's your brain doing? Um, like I'll get the like, thinking about, okay, I know where I'm going to go next, but then I'll realize that I haven't moved my arms in a while. So let's keep going. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have five angles left here to do. It's kind of magic, all this free motion quilting. It's pretty neat. And I think it's cool that you can do it on uh, machines where, you know, they were probably never ever thinking about free motion quilting as a thing to do on the machine. All right, let's keep shushing. All right, two more, two more V's to go. Yeah, multitasking at its finest. Yeah, 
once you get this down, then you can have the three things in your brain all at once and have it all figured out. But yeah, definitely noticing that I'm not moving my hands as much as I should, probably should. Which is great. That's a great thing to realize because it's something I can work on as we go along here. It's going faster though now, um, just doing this size loop, which is great. I, I, I think it fills the space just fine. It's, it's kind of sweet and fun. Uh-oh, I just trapped myself here. So I definitely have to work on what to do when I get trapped. I'm not getting out of spaces very elegantly. <laughs> I think it's more, more about not getting into that situation to begin with. All right, we are almost done here. Big loopies, let's get a big loop in the corner. All right, time to scooch again. Yeah, if the ladies can do it with a treadle, then we can do it with electric. Yeah, exactly. Man, I would love to have a treadle machine. That would just be a blast, I think figuring out that. All right, we're approaching the end here. Oops, and I'm stuck. There we go. That's all I'm going to do with that. Okay, made it through another row. We had a few hiccups there, but we worked it out. I think that um, changing the needle, changing the bobbin, I think the real problem was the bobbin running out, but you know what? Doesn't hurt changing the needle to let's take a look. Ooh, that is row three. I think there's 11 rows um, total here. So we are well on our way. I don't know if we'll be able to do a row every night, especially once we get into like more intricate stuff, but I'm pretty stoked. Um, we got a whole nother row. I mean, got a little crazy here. I was trying to work through pretty quickly um, towards the end. Yeah, I was getting trapped there in a goofy way. Ah, oh, well. That's the fun of this is just realizing things, realizing places to improve. That's kind of what, what I'm happy about. All right, let's, um, let's check out the back again. I love seeing this kind of, this uh, ghost quilting happen on the back here. So I don't know if you guys can tell too much. Let's try and get some shadow here. But there, so now we got, there we go. So we got the it's sideways here now, but we got the first three rows done, but you can really start to see the different rows pop. 
So I really like doing that every other row. I think it's really going to make this fun zigzag on, on the back. So I'm stoked about that. We are definitely sewing, starting to sew through some of our, our back our back pieces, like right here. I think this is probably where things were jumping a little bit for me. But yeah, we are going through all these different layers of fabric. And that's just going to get... That's just going to get more and more intense. Oh yeah, look, this is where, ooh, that's interesting. This is where we are going a really tight, a uh, really tight swirl. And look, it, it pushed, um, pushed the fabric out quite a bit. The fabric moved around quite a bit. So that's something I'm going to have to look out for if I'm doing some dense stitching. Actually, it's not all that bad. It was just really that one little spot. So that's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah. I mean, soon we'll be going through some really hefty stuff, like like when we get down to here. This might be a little bit more difficult for uh, stitching through, but you know what? Maybe we'll be pros by then. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, row three, a bunch of pretty swirls done. I am super duper stoked. So we are also dealing with more bulk each, each row, but so far so good. Um, if there's 11 rows, we could go like to row six maybe, and then we'll flip and then do the other five. I think that's probably what the plan will be. So row four will be next. So I think it's just going to get more and more difficult in, in the, the deal, uh, in the neck of my machine here with the, all the bunched up, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, tomorrow, I think I want to try some of those echoing arcs. So let me see if I can find that in, um, in Krista's Machine Quilting with Style book here. Yeah, these guys. So this is these um, free motion spirals. So this is like my super fear. I kind of like the meandering. I, I just, this freaks me out even more. So my, my fear with the meandering was getting in and out of places, right? So this is all about getting in and out of places. You do a little swirl and then you got a back swirl to get out of that swirl and then somehow start another swirl. <laughs> Uh, so I'm a little freaked out, but we're going to try this next, I think. This will be a good challenge. So tomorrow will be, will be interesting. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can figure that out. I'm conquering the fears. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening. Oop, hold on, guys, sorry. All right, I am in, okay, there we go. So I got into a place where I can add emojis and stuff and I've never been there before, so. All right, I am back here. So thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me while I, <laughs> while I give all this stuff a try. I'm just trying to, you know, I've never figured out how to free motion quilt. It was always too scary, so I'm really happy I get to try and do some of these things here with, with you guys. So there we go. Those are some of the, the last bits of, of swirls. Whew. All right. We're going to do those crazy echoing uh, half arc swirlies tomorrow. <sighs> we'll see how we, well we, how we do. I'm already a little nervous about it, but with you guys there, it's uh, helped me along. Everything seems to go fine. So, all right. And we got a new bobbin and new needle uh, for tomorrow. So that'll be good too. Okay, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and I will be back here tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central. So thanks again, guys. Have a fabulous evening. I will see you tomorrow.